Hey everybody, Sean Halley from Line 6 here. If you're in the market for a floor-based guitar processor and you want it to be really easy to use, but at the same time not really sacrifice anything on the technological or creativity end, you're really talking about a Pod HT300. So obviously in this age of smartphones and tablet processors, we all know how much benefit technology can bring our lives. But the problem is, as guitar players, sometimes it can feel a bit like we need a degree in nano follicular design to be able to run our guitar rigs. So not so with the Pod HD 300. In this video, we're going to take you through how it works, how it sounds, and hopefully in the process, give you an idea of just how quickly you can get ideas off of your hands, down to the floor, and then out to your amp. So stick around. Here we go. Okay, so the Pod HD 300 actually has over 80 M class effects built into a seriously rugged all metal chassis, in addition to 16 brand new high definition amp models. And you get an expression pedal and a USB port for both computer recording and patch sharing because you can share patches back and forth between other Pod HD owners, which is kind of cool. So the front panel of the HD 300 is arranged to get you up and running quickly. Once you get used to it, it should feel kind of like you've got three or four guitar pedals and a volume pedal stacked together inside of one box. So on the top panel, you have the three smart effects knobs. And these guys allow you to select, audition, and tweak effects on the fly with one knob. It's super slick. It's not just moving one parameter. For instance, on a compressor, it may be lowering the threshold while raising the output gain as you move the knob up, thus keeping the level the same. Kind of like a better knob, if that makes sense. So there are three effects processors controlled by those smart knobs. To the right, you have the knob for reverb, and then both a big alphanumeric and an LCD display. You'll never have to guess what some archaic numeral-only display is trying to tell you on the HD300. It actually uses real words and stuff. Below those, you have the controls for the amp models. As you go around the travel of that knob, you can select one of 16 brand new HD amp models, and you can choose whether or not those are full models with cabinets and mics, or just preamp versions. To the right of that, the controls for the amp are dedicated. They're never going to do any other job, which means that you don't have to dive around through a menu trying to figure out where the heck the gain is. If it needs more bass, grab it. By the way, you can hit the FX only button to fully remove all amp processing if you want. Easy peasy. Below the huge steel bar designed to prevent your foot from accidentally turning your clean solo on satin doll into a Metallica solo by accidentally touching amp knobs, you have the foot pedals. So the foot switches have three different functions, and you can tell what they're doing by the color of the lights. So you have green, red, and amber. In green mode, it's just patch select mode, so any button press has the potential to change everything there is about the guitar sound. In this area also, you have the bank behavior. So hit the two left pedals to go up a bank and then select a preset in that bank, or hit the two middle pedals to go down a bank and select a preset once you're there. So here is our dry guitar sound. <laughs> If I just hit that patch again to recall it, now you get... Yeah, brown. Or... Or... Kind of cool. So, from green, you go to red, which now controls the onboard looper on the HT300. I know that frightens some people. I'm a scared of looping, because looping kind of scares me. So we'll come back to that. After that, you have amber mode, basically, where you get your analog stomp box pedals back. So these now become on-off switches for all the onboard processing inside the HT300. Amp, FX1, FX2, and FX3. Pretty simple. So let's do this. 
let's build a sound right from scratch. So you can tell I've got nothing going on. So let's turn an amp model on and tweak it. Turn the drive down a little bit, turn the bass down a little bit, change the mids. Pretty good. I think we'll go for kind of a crazy, sort of an 80s, edgy, delayish kind of a sound. So this is a good start. So now I'm, of course, going to need some compression. So we'll turn that on and dial that smart knob up. Give me lots. Cool. Right. And I need some delay, of course. So we'll turn the delay on and tweak that up. Now remember, you don't have to choose a special effect on the HD300 to get it to follow tap tempo. If you want them to, they all will. No big deal. So now we just need a new tempo. Now back to that pesky red light mode. I know there are some people that would rather completely deny the existence of the looper, so you can set a preference to have the HD300 ignore it when you're using the bank switch. To trigger the looper then, you'd have to hold down the mode switch for two seconds. And speaking of the looper, it's easy to create complex soundscapes with Pod HD because you can always change the sound in between layers. Choose a new sound, either by recalling a new preset or just by turning on or off one of the effects that are already loaded in that patch and you're ready to go. Before we actually get to the looping example, let's get an idea of the sounds we have. So here's the clean alchemist. If you add the blackface double pre, use it like a distortion pedal. Um, right now, I've got the actual distortion pedal, which is a tube driver. Script phaser. And finally, the auto volume. So I think we're ready. Let's just put together a quick little loop. Now, if you're not familiar with looping, just to get started, just tap along with what you're going to be playing and then just hit the pedal on the times when you would do downbeats, right? So you get to... Uh... So hopefully that gives you an idea of just how the HD300 works. It's very easy to use, but you don't have to sacrifice anything in the departments of sound quality, connectivity, real-time control to get that ease of use, which is pretty cool. So my name is Sean Halley. Thanks for stopping by. I encourage you to go check one out at a store. I think you'd be surprised. Thanks. Cheers. <laughs>